Hi guys, uh, this is David Fountain. How are you doing? I know it's been a, a very long time. I'm also known as as TD Ben on the Cox Engine Forum, by the way. I've just been uh, sorry for my inactivity. It's, I've just been having a hard time lately. You know, you know, with my home being wiped out in the middle of Georgia due to the storms and whatnot. But I'm still kicking, folks. Don't worry. But anyway, I just wanted to. Uh, kind of like uh somewhat in my dry spill with this little video uh showcasing a new model i just acquired and i well i must say finally acquired i've been looking for one of these things for years uh this is the ju 87 d stuka by cox this is cox this is probably one of cox's most beautiful models they ever produced uh, it also happens to be one of the biggest as well as the heaviest and worst flying model they ever produced. The worst flying part I will explain a little bit later in the video. But anywhere, but anyway, this particular example you see here is from the early mid 70s. This one is like 74, 1978. This particular example has rubber wheels as well as the um, as well as the wire landing gear that bolts to the wing. The bolt on you know bolt on landing gear which also happens to be the most fragile and it has the sideways facing uh 190-1 product engine uh, the early versions which the earliest versions which were uh molded in green had had the 190 product engine the only difference between the two engines was the cylinder uh configuration with the 190 having a single bypass port whereas the 190-1 had dual bypass the reason why for the 190-1 over the 190 which were which both ran well ran equally well uh was the 190-1 had more power which which this this model really needed due to the fact that it was quite heavy uh the 190 Flew them, flew them okay. They just didn't have the power, uh, and with the and with the nasty flight characteristics this model has, it needed the extra power, <laughs> really, because number one, it really helped its takeoff roll as well. Uh, this this particular version, as I said, had has rubber wheels, and which makes it really nice on a takeoff roll. On the pavement, uh, I highly recommend for any anyone who wants to fly one of these things. These things are flown off of pavement only. Uh, these models, uh, the one, the ones with the, uh, the bolt-on wire landing gear in particular, are very fragile and don't take rough landings very well, as well as a rough takeoff from a real hard, you know, rough surface. Uh, so be mindful of that. Uh, another notable feature on these in, on these particular models is the is the 190-1 as well as the 190 had both both had postage stamp back plates which had little tabs on each side that engaged in little slots in the fuselage to hold them in place. Uh, this was kind of like a little space saver back plate that they have. However, it made it difficult to mount in other models. Uh, they had adapter motor mounts available, like uh, the one produced by by uh, Dubro for the longest time. But you know, they still they still weren't the easiest to mount. Uh, and when Cox came, uh, later came out with the horseshoe backplate engines, they made those were a whole lot easier. But anyway, that's that's kind of a different story. But uh, another notable feature between this model and the earlier versions is this is the Black Knight variant. As you see, it's it's in the black uh, color scheme. The uh, early ones were in green. Uh, uh, so let's go on and pop the lid off. Take a look at the beauty within, and here we go. There's the beauty. I must apologize for the lighting, by the way, folks. I'm not in the best place for this. <laughs> so here we go. As you can see, this thing is pristine. It's it's never been out of the box. Never seen a drop of fuel. Still got the tie downs. Uh, I keep this thing from zooming on me. 
some reason. I'm trying to hold my lens cover and the camera at the same time. I apologize. It's got a zoom lever on the side of the lens casing. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. This also has everything with it. It's got the uh, manual, which is right there, which is in excellent shape. And it's even got the warranty card as well as the uh, as the tying of denim for the uh, for the for the lines for the for the controls. It's even got that. And there's the hardware pack as you see right here. The only blemish being is it's been opened. Uh, you know, I guess by the previous owner, I guess inspect the contents. The only other hang up this model has is is it's missing one of the screws as well as both of the nuts that, that uh, secured the landing gear in place uh, which is no big deal I mean those can be easily replaced who knows it still might be in the box somewhere it still might be down in the bottom like I said this thing has never been out of the box the wheel pants are up underneath the wing and whatnot but this particular example is pristine there's not even a scratch on it um, in fact, I'm kind. Of, in fact, I'm kind of leery if I wanted to fly it or not. I don't really think I will. I may. I'm. I want. I'm not. I'm not willing to really say I'm not going to fly it. You know, I'm. I am one of these guys that believes an airplane is designed to fly and not and not sit on the ground looking pretty. But you know, but it's. I mean, if I can put lay my hands on them on an example that isn't as pristine then I'll probably fly it and leave this one in the box I don't know but anyway another notable thing about its condition is it has no heat damage whatsoever no warped plastic no really discolored I mean nothing's really discolored or whatnot even the box is in decent shape the only blemish on the box is they had gotten torn once upon a time right there but you know the models the model is in pristine condition yeah, I mean this is a real good score right here anyway also um, enough on that uh, as I stated before when I made a mention about its flight characteristics I'm going to kind of explain that right now uh, this particular model is not meant for the beginner uh, the reason why these models are so expensive on eBay is because they're getting they're quite rare the reason being is people bought these things and not reading the warning tag on the side of the box which you see right here you see the little check mark right there it says advanced this model is not meant even by Cox it's not meant for the beginner this is it, this being a scale model and a heavy model is meant for the advanced pilot and it means it I mean they really mean it it's not that this model flies badly it actually does fly pretty good uh, it flies good on the wing and whatnot it's just its problem lies in its elevator its elevator as you can see right there is very narrow and, and, has, and has very little control movement Therefore, this particular model in flight uh, had, you know, uh, when you give it a control input, it kind of has to think about it before it responds. So, therefore, a pilot has to lead this model, has to, has to stay in front of it at all times because its control, with its control response is like it's in slow motion. I mean, it's, it's lethargic at best. And a lot of these models were put in the ground on, for, on, a, on its first flight, you know, by... And you know these models were bought by parents or whatnot, or for kids or even adults that had no idea to, how to fly, or may have been too, or if they have flown had too low experience, didn't have enough experience, and they were crashed out of the box. I mean, this model comes off the ground fairly easy. I've flown. I've flown. A, I've flown these things before. My first one was a victim too. So I, I'm. I'm. I'm talking from experience here. Uh, my first one kind of went up, kind of did a half wing over and hit the ground because it just didn't. You know, it didn't have the control input to stay going. 
my my second version, which was the later one, which has the upright version, it was a 1980-81 variant. That's my second one because I had gotten some experience on the Cox PT-19s at the time. Went much better. I actually flew its wings off and it finally just, it died because it uh, the wing separated <laughs> and kind of shattered. Uh, which I will tell you, these models I highly recommend. They are flown off of, off of a hard surface if you can. Uh, these can be hand launched, but the landing is what is what will tear you up. If these models, especially if it has the bolt-on landing gear, are very fragile and don't, as I stated before, don't take hard landings well at all. They're very very fragile. So please, if you decide to fly one of these things make sure you got adequate experience or your or your model is not going to live long and and also another thing no loops please no loops <laughs> this model even I'm sure it can loop but it just it will be a very wide loop and it's like I said it's not a very fast model it it will hit the ground. That's what I'm saying. So just just level this level flight and stay ahead of the model. But anyway, that's enough about the flight characteristics. Just make sure you have the experience. Is what I'm saying. And use good quality fuel as well. Uh, if if a Sig Champion 25 or whatnot is a good fuel for it. But anyway. I just wanted to showcase my model, my new toy here, and so y'all can enjoy it. I'm going to post this up on YouTube and on a Cox Engine forum a little bit later, so everyone can enjoy it. So anyway, this is David Fountain, known as T.D. Bennett, signing out. I hope y'all have a great evening or a great day or a great morning, wherever you're at. Y'all take it easy. Bye.